Imam Hassan had been martyred, and he had started the first Islamic resistance movement, and that was headed by uh, Hujar Ali. Hujar Ali was also murdered, he was hanged by Mawia, uh, because he had become a threat. Now Imam Hussein salam, appears. But because of the situation, there is no base. There is no central base for the revolution. He has no one with him. He has nobody to fight. He has no weapons. He has people around him whom he cannot even trust. All he has is very few companions and members of his family. The faithful companions who had not sold themselves sought security and devotion. We talked about that yesterday. That there were companions who, instead of siding with Imam Hussein and coming up against the oppressors, they went and put themselves in the mosques, went and read Quran, but stayed quiet. They did not take up any action against the oppressors. They slip into the shell of resp uh, respectability, so to speak. You see that nowadays as well. If you look around what's happening today, the same situation is repeating. History repeats itself. There are many channels, many people around the world, with all the zulm that's going on, they are quiet. They don't even talk about what's happening to the Shias who are being martyred in Pakistan, in Iran, in Iraq. Nobody talks about that. Nobody even talks about the Palestinians. They play lip service on that. Then there's that group we talked about who have now appeared in the palace, the Green Palace of Mawia. I make no exception for using names because it's, it's part of my duty to talk about history. We cannot lie about history. I have no, I have no intention to offend anyone who may not agree with what I say. What they were trying to do, what the Umayyads were trying to do, was they were trying to obliterate the message of the Ahlul Bayt. They had done that through the time, soon after the death of the Prophet throughout the time that he had the first three caliphs, you can see that they changed, they had begun to make a systematic change in the aspect of Sharia. In the Sunnah of the Prophet, they started to change the Azan. They changed the Azan. They changed the way the wudu was done. They changed the way they introduced new innovation like Tarawi prayers. They changed the aspect of the burial of the dead from five takbirs to four takbirs. This change was taking place amongst a, 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 an environment where they were very powerful in decimating the information. And they were creating another religion to say that Ahlul Bayt really did not exist. This is what we are going to bring for you. So, so it is uh, very important for us to understand that by destroying the Ahlul Bayt, by murdering Imam Ali alayhi salam, by the unmanly act of poisoning and destroying Imam Hassan al-Islam, the wickedness of Mawia tries to destroy the resistance of Hujar Adi. However, it is too aware, it's all too aware that the spirit of, the, of Islam cannot be broken. The Umayyads try whatever they do. Now they control everything from Syria to Khorasan. They have money, they have power, they have everything. They try and kill people by the masses, but still they find there is resistance because the true spirit of Islam continues to live with a, with a handful of people who are now in the resistance. No matter how they wish to guarantee the stability, no matter what they try to do to guarantee the stability of their monarchy, stability of their system, everything is coming to zero. They know they cannot change it because this little spark keeps emerging from, 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 from the teachings of the al Bayt. The Islamic army may have been defeated, but Islam lives on. 
Now, in spite of Imam Ali's murder, the name of Ali reverberates everywhere. Even at that time. Even with people who were on the opposite side, who stood in a state in the mosque, they knew, they mentioned, they, they remembered Imam Ali's name. And that happens. Uh, it's still today that name will continue to remember. As you said, as Molana was mentioning yesterday, that 12 million people came to Karbala, according to the BBC. There's a hadith from the Prophet from Imam Ali alayhi salam. He said that towards the end of time, Karbala will be a mausoleum palace that people from all over the world will converge on. And it will be surrounded by marketplaces that will be so famous and attract so many people from around the world that everybody will be in awe. Why? In spite of Abu Dhar being exiled and dying in the desert of Rabada, and the rallying cries for Abu Dhar are still heard. Don't we all remember Abu Dhar as a companion? We do. So what the Umayyads do is they realize that the true hearts of these dangers are not in the wellsprings of revolts. The Umayyads now are becoming a little clever. They start to decide, they decide to say, look, we cannot change them. No matter how much we suppress them, how much we kill, no matter what we do, what we have to do, no matter what we do, even taking Quran on, the spear, on, on their spears, like Mawiyah did in the Battle of Safin, they realize it is the power that these people have is in their hearts and their minds. They cannot change the hearts and minds of the revolution. And if these two sources are not destroyed, all the Umayyad victories without effect and all their forces are endangered. So the Umayyads are now also planning ahead. They plan everything ahead, like uh, the, the, the Westerners. They plan everything ahead and what they want to go and destroy around the world, and what they want to go and deserve. The same thing is happening now, the same thing happened then. If these two remain, the hearts and minds remain, people like Abu Dhar, Hujar, Amr ibn Yasser, and Malik will also remain alive in their shahada. That means they've been martyred, but people will remember them, so they are alive. And they will send new people into the battlefields. People will get inspiration from them and come into the battlefields. <coughs> Every Ali will achieve shahadat before death and will die in life. This is a subject that is very deep, and perhaps uh, we have uh, we'll have Malana uh, talk about it uh, sometime. Inshallah. But if the fire of the school of thought of Imam Ali is not destroyed according to the Umayyads, they have no immunity. No red revolution can be maintained by mass executions. You see, death is of two kinds. One is the death which is called black death, which is the death of the cowards and the oppressors. The other one is the death called the red death, which is the death of the martyrs. They will remain immune from the moment the sea of blood, in the sea of blood and the cemetery of death. The mission of the divine revolution, revolution is not in the Quran, it is in the hearts and minds of people who are prepared to follow the ideology of the gate of the city of knowledge. If these two fire-giving luminous powers, these movement-creating centers are destroyed, the enemy can, re can remain and make a nest. Attacks begin, arms are gathered to destroy the two sources of dangers, the two real sources of explosion and fire, hearts and minds. These are sources of explosion. <coughs> the intellectuals sell out and the clergy support the powerful. We see that today. Say in Islam, the fate of everything changes. All the values are annihilated. The spirit of the Islamic revolution is killed. 
Its direction is changed and finally the people are sacrificed in the name of religion. It is the first time that Islam, with the assistance of religious scholars, and this is important for youngsters to know, the first time in Islam, during the time of Muawiyah, that the religious scholars testify on behalf of the regime, like they do today in, in, in Saudi Arabia. The religious authority compulsively believes that everything should be related to God, and this is a very important thing coming up. There were two horrible cancers which fall upon people. And this is what I'll discuss tomorrow, inshallah. The two cancers are, they use the word in the name of God and the religion of God. Inshallah. Salamat.